Buongiorno a tutti. Good day to you all. My name is Vinicius Qatar and welcome to Forever Opera. Forever Opera is a video journal brought to you by a community of opera professionals on the cutting edge of performance practice. We will present to you the world of opera in all of its minute details. But before you raise the curtain, hit the subscribe button. After that, click on the notification bell and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And now, sit back and enjoy. This year, 2020, musicians everywhere will mark the 250th birthday of a man who changed music forever, Ludwig van Beethoven. So as a birthday present from all of us at Forever Opera, on today's episode we will explore Herr Beethoven's one and only operatic masterpiece, Fidelio. Now, Jules Sivario, Vorhang auf, curtain up! Beethoven, the man, the artist, the ton dichter, as he called himself. A life full of passion, success, disappointments and of deafening silence. All of this drama and heart-rending catharsis herald the eternal music of the Sturm und Drang movement. Man was born free and he's everywhere in chains, wrote J.J. Rousseau. Fidelio was not at all about politics, but about wifely virtue. So writes Zondleitner, the libretist. Herr Beethoven's only opera had three different versions, the first one being premiered on the 20th of November 1805 at the Theater an der Wien in Vienna, under the name Leonore oder der Triumph der Ehrlichen Liebe, in three acts. The first version's libretto was adapted by Josef Sonnleitner from the French by Jean-Nicolas Boy. But as bad luck would have it, Vienna was then under French military occupation. Ludwig van's first version of Leonore would have three performances and no more. A second version would follow one year later after his good friend Stefan von Breuning and the soloists convinced Beethoven to shorten the work into just two acts. The second premiere took place once again at the Theater de Wien on the 29th of March and 10th of April 1806 with great success. But Beethoven got into some real disagreement with the theater management and that was it. The third and final version was premiered eight years later on 23rd of May 1814 at the Kärntner Theater in Vienna with additional libretto supplied by Georg Friedrich Treitschke. And that, my friends, is a version most opera houses in the world continue to perform. Being so, we'll talk about this one today. The state prison near Sevilla, late 18th century. Don Pizarro has illegally detained the Spanish noble Florestan for two years to prevent him from revealing his crimes. Florestan's wife, Leonore, suspects her husband is in captivity. Disguising herself as a man and assuming the name Fidelio, Leonore has found employ under the jailer Rocco in the hope of being able to free her Florestan. As with most operas, Fidelio starts with an ouverture. And not only one. In this case, Beethoven composed four different versions throughout his life. Curtain up, and we are introduced to the young Marceline and Joaquin, who are talking about law. The duet in free ABA form is based on a four-note orchestral figure. Beethoven even writes all strings playing in unison to characterize the knockings at the door. <laughs> jo 
Joaquin leaves the stage and it's time for Marceline to show her talent with the lovely aria in C minor. O wer is schon mit dir vereint? Her craving for Fiselio is represented first in an anguished C minor. and later as hope in C major. <laughs> Marcelina's father Rocco arrives Leonore, the heroine, is introduced and we listen to one of the most sublime works of genius composed by Beethoven. Rocco has trusted Fidelio over time and would also be pleased to see his daughter Marceline married to him, something which Marceline's previous suitor Joaquin is very angry about. But a man cannot live by bread alone, but also by money. Here follows Rocco's two-strophe aria in B-flat major. Hat man nicht auch Gold bei Neben? A lively tercet in F major now follows between Rocco, Leonore and Marceline. Leonore asks Rocco for his complete trust and to allow her to go to prison with him. Rocco agrees but forbids Leonore to go to the very closely guarded prisoner. Leonore already suspects that it must be her husband Florestan. Fear and hope are in the air. In La Barcha, we are introduced to the story's villain, Pizarro. It is a 4-4 measure starting on the first beat, but these quarter notes from the Contrabassian timpani sound like an upbeat easily making the listener confused as to where the beat falls. I wonder if we could even march to it without getting lost. Ha, welch ein Augenblick! Pizarro's aria with choir in D minor going into D major. Pizarro finds mail among the letters received from the minister who is planning a surprise visit to the prison. The minister had heard that there were victims of unjust violence in prison. Shelley not a song that Justin Bieber would be able to sing. <laughs> I will give you money so you can kill Florestan. But Rocco is not that kind of guy. But as Pizarro is very much that kind of guy, he resolves to do the deed himself. Rocco need only dig Florestan's grave. <laughs> And now comes the moment everybody is waiting for. Even the Hornists. <laughs> Leonore's recitativo and aria. Abscheulicher, wo eilst du hin? 
one of the hardest arias ever written for soprano with three obbligati horns and a bassoon. Finally comes the first finale with a very precise and emotional men's choir. Oh, welche Lust! The prisoners get a little bit of sunlight while Leonore tries to find her husband, but it's all in vain. He's nowhere to be found. I think you're probably wondering, where's the lead in tenor? That's right, Beethoven holds his horses and presents the tenorial hero in the second act. Oh, and if you think, the jeezy peasy then, the jeezy peasy then, nope, my friends, Florestan has to stay on stage until the end of the opera. After a long orchestral opening, Florestan starts his recitativo with a high G delivered on a pianissimo. The quiet mood continues in the recitativo. Melodrama and duet. A melodrama comes from the French opera tradition in which the performance declaims spoken text to the orchestral commentary. A duet follows in A minor with the help of one of the darkest instruments, and one of my favorite ones. The Condrabasun. Leonore and Rocco are searching for the famous prisoner Florestan. A terzet follows. It is the first time Beethoven brings the voices of Leonore and Florestan together. The apex of the whole opera, a quartet full of explosions, revelations and drama. Fidelio reveals her true identity as Leonore and threatens Don Pizarro with a weapon. Joaquin then announces the arrival of the minister. <laughs> Freude. The long separated couple is united and they sing the astonishing G major duet. Yes, this opera, for all of its dramatic stakes, 
finally allows us to enjoy tenderness, sweet love, and happiness. Well, all's well that ends well. The minister, Don Fernando, releases all innocent prisoners and recognizes his old friend Florestan in chains. When he learns how heroic Leonore has been, he lets her husband free from his bonds. Don Pizarro is arrested and everyone present praises the power of love. <laughs> Recently, I've had the pleasure to conduct a new premiere of Fidelio at the Stadtne di Vadlo Kosice in Slovakia, where I'm the chief conductor. So I'd like to share with you some insights from our artists. Bonjour, chers amis mélomanes et amoureux de l'opéra. En ces temps où tout est sens dessus dessous, est né le projet Opera Forever, sous la tutelle de Maestro Vinicius Scatar qui vous présente des opéras de façon professionnelle, détaillée et originale. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous raconter comment j'ai préparé le rôle exigeant de Léonore dans le Fidelio de Beethoven. Pour ce rôle, il ne s'agit pas seulement d'apprendre les notes, de répéter sa voix évidemment, de répéter les sauts vocaux périlleux de l'aria, encore et encore, de travailler l'endurance, car le rôle est long et exigeant jusqu'à la fin, où la partie de Léonore remonte dans les stratosphères de la voix. Mais il s'agit aussi de trouver l'équilibre et la balance entre le moment où je dois tout donner et le moment où je peux peut-être économiser un peu. Le yoga est une bonne méthode pour trouver l'équilibre physique, mental, nécessaire à un rôle aussi exigeant. Et voilà, sur ce, je vous souhaite bon visionnage, bonne santé et surtout lavez-vous les mains. Amitié, Frédéric, à bientôt. Ich hatte die große Freude im Beethoven Jahr mit Vinicius Kata in Kosice den Florestan aus der Oper Fidelio zu singen. Eine oft belächelte und unterschätzte Partie, weil man ja denkt, der ist erst im zweiten Akt dran. Wenn man sich aber näher damit befasst und sie näher betrachtet, merkt man, dass sie doch ihre Schwierigkeiten hat. Beginnend nach der Pause sofort mit der Are Gott, welch dunkel hier. Weiter geht's Flux bis zum Schluss. Man verlässt kein einziges Mal die Bühne, man bleibt einfach, spielt durch, singt durch und muss sich seine Kraft wirklich einteilen. Es gibt kaum Möglichkeiten, sich auszurasten. Es gibt kaum Möglichkeiten, sich zu entspannen. Und es ist immer in einer Lage, die wirklich sehr anstrengend und sehr außergewöhnlich ist für eine Tenorstimme. Man ist froh, bis man endlich zum Finale kommt. Wäre nicht das Duett. Ein Duett, das für beide Protagonisten wirklich alles abverlangt. Aber man hat immer noch das Finale, wo einer meiner wirklichen Lieblingsstellen vorkommt, und zwar die Stelle mit, den, mit dem Männerchor. Sie wissen, was ich meine. Wer ein solches Weib errungen. Erkannt? Mehr singe ich nicht, keine Sorge. Jetzt, danach, nur noch Ensemble. Sehr hochgelagert, sehr schwierig zu singen. Und wenn man Pech hat, wird man so inszeniert, dass man ganz vorne steht. Somit muss man da auch Farbe bekennen. Aber musikalisch ein tolles Werk. Es macht Spaß, es zu singen. Man ist froh, wenn man es überlebt hat. Und 
umso glücklicher über den Schlussapplaus, den man dann bekommt. Vi saluto ragazzi, sono Ludovic. Oggi parliamo un po' di Beethoven, dell'unica sua opera di Fidelio, di quella opera che amata e non amata, di quella opera che si dice che è scritta non per cantanti, che tutti i cantanti hanno paura per cominciare di, di cantare Beethoven perché si dice che non è cantabile. In realtà, con questa esperienza che ho avuto con il fantastico direttore dell'orchestra eh, Vinizius Scatta e con eh, fantastici collegi, voglio dirvi che per me solo è una questione di, di capire fi la filosofia eh, di Beethoven. Beethoven che ha finalizzato questa opera tramite nove anni, sono tre versioni, sono quattro overture, sono, eh, sono, hanno rifatto il testo, hanno rifatto tu, tutte le cose per avere un, un prodotto finale. Per lui eh, è stato molto importante di, di, di aggiungere qua, eh, come, come, come musicista, come, come eh, scrittore dell'opera. Eh, io penso che se noi possiamo capire quello che vuol dire Beethoven, capiamo anche come dobbiamo cantarlo. Questo Pizzare è una, una persona nera, una persona con l'anima nera, una persona scura, un, uh, il prototipo del Turanno. Lui vuole solo che non si sappia quelle cose che lui ha fatto. Ma al fine questa non riesce perché il bene deve vincere. In Beethoven's time, the leading opera innovator was Luigi Cherubini. And we know, in fact, that Beethoven admired Cherubini's work. Uh, it can probably be firmly established that uh, the work of Cherubini and the late works of Mozart, especially Salbeflöte and Clemenza di Tito, laid a, a foundation uh, from which Beethoven took his departure with the work of Fidelio. Uh, we also know that Schikaneda, who had collaborated with Mozart on Saberflöte, influenced Beethoven with regard to composing an opera, which would then contend with the work of Cherubini in Vienna. Jean-Nicolas Bouilly, uh, the librettist, uh, in fact, the, the work Leonora itself was already set by a French composer, Gavot. Uh, Beethoven had a copy of this manuscript, we, we also know now. The work was also later set by a, Ferd by a Ferdinand Payer and was premiered in Dresden in the Italian language, but this was after Beethoven's first premiere of Fidelio. The bass, uh, Samuel, Sebastian rather, Sebastian Meyer, had, uh, had been a very successful Sarastro and Publius for Mozart and uh, even Pasha Zilim. Uh, he was commissioned to sing Pizza Row for the first performance, and we know that Beethoven wrote an enormously difficult phrase that uh, Sebastian Meyer would lament he could not sing. And I think it was an effort on Beethoven's part to get Meyer thrown out of the production, because it was stricken from later editions. Now tell me something. Which is your favourite Beethoven composition? Write it down in the comment section below, and see you next time at Forever Opera. Ci vediamo!